In this tutorial, we will look at how to use audio effects to enhance your set. There are many audio effects available, and so we won't be able to cover them all. It will simply act as an introduction to some of the more useful ones to choose as a DJ. To use effects within Live, click on the tab to change the track view, or use the keyboard shortcut F12 or Control F12 on the Mac. You can then open up Live's device browser, go to Audio Effects, and choose an effect to drag onto the part of the screen where it says Drop Audio Effects here. When you're dragging effects in, you can also drag them straight onto a track. This can be helpful as you'll then know exactly which track you've put the effect on. If you want to use MIDI effects, then these work in exactly the same way by dragging them onto a MIDI track. Let's go back to the audio track and press delete to get rid of that effect, and then we'll start by dragging in EQ3. This is the most widely used DJ effect, and if you use an external DJ mixer, you'll most likely already have it available on that. The EQ3 allows you to adjust the low, middle or high frequencies of the music. I'd recommend having an EQ3 on both your left and right tracks and then mapping each knob to your MIDI controller to give you hands-on control. For more information on how to use EQ creatively, see the How to Mix tutorial, which demonstrates how to use it in depth. Let's select that effect and press Delete to get rid of it. The effect that is next most commonly used by DJs is the filter, and you can find this by choosing Auto Filter. Using Mini Map Mode, map the cutoff setting, which is this box, to a knob on your MIDI controller. Then map the resonance, which is this box marked Q, to a different knob. You can now create great sounding sweeps as the filter gradually cuts out the high frequencies as you turn the cutoff knob. If you change the filter type to the next one, which is a high pass filter, then the filter will do the opposite, gradually removing the low frequencies as you turn the cutoff knob up. As you adjust the filter, the resonance control can be used to make the effect more noticeable as you sweep through the frequencies. Once you've set up a filter on each track, you can use them in place of EQ during each mix to gradually cut out any high or low frequencies that you don't require. Let's now get rid of Auto Filter and have a look at Beat Repeat instead. This creates a great double beat effect that can be used even if you don't have a MIDI controller. Go to Key Map Mode and assign the on off switch to a button on the computer keyboard, and you can now turn it on and off as required. As with many of Live's effects, the easiest way to get to grips with them is to listen through the presets and see what they sound like first. To do this, start the music playing and then click on the hot swap button. Now double click on each preset to have a listen to it. With a bit of practice, you can create the popular stutter effect by using Beat Repeat. Set interval to a quarter, and then click on the grid control. 
You can then use your keyboard to up and down keys to change the grid size and create a self-made build-up. Next, let's have a look at auto pan. This creates a great stereo panning effect, which sounds amazing when you stand between the speakers. Again, the best place to start is by listening through to the presets. When you find an effect that you like, you may wish to customise it. The best place to read up on how to do this is in Live's manual, which explains how each one works in detail. A good place to look for effects to use with your set is the Audio Effects Rack, Performance and DJ section. There are many DJ friendly effects found here, such as a really useful one called Fade to Grey. This effect is just great if you want to fade a track out of the mix without having to beat match it. Turn the effect up slowly and then you can trigger a new clip to come in over the top of it. Let's hear this in action. A quick word of warning with Fade to Grey. After you finish with it, make sure that you always turn it back to its normal position, otherwise you'll wonder why you can't hear it when you come back to that track. As well as using Live's built-in effects, you can also use third-party plugins. These can be accessed by clicking on the third browser icon down. A fun third-party effect to use is DeBlue's Glitch plugin. This totally mashes up the source material to create a stunning effect which will spice up the dullest tune or longest breakdown. When using third party plugins, they'll need to be adjusted through the plugin's own window. Click on the spanner icon and then you can choose a preset or adjust it as you want. Glitch works like a step sequencer, allowing you to assign various effects to come in on a 4 bar sequence. Glitch isn't available on the Mac, but if you want to create a similar effect, try using the Effectrix plugin from Sugarbytes. You can also add effects to the master track so that they affect the whole mix instead of just one track of it. A good example of this is the limiter. This ensures that the volume leaving your computer never exceeds a certain level and it's very important for making sure that your output doesn't overload the amplification equipment. As a general rule, the output on any track, and especially the master track, should never exceed zero decibels. After this point, the meter will turn red, indicating that the signal is clipping and will be distorting. The best practice is to control your audio levels by using the volume faders. However, there are times when it's hard to keep track of your levels perfectly, especially while doing mixes and adding effects. For most situations, you'll find that the default settings are sufficient. Let's see the limiter in action. If I increase the track volume here, you can see that the limiter is reducing the volume, keeping the output in check. This is a good way to see if you need to reduce the volume levels and the meter will give you an indication of how much you need to reduce them by. So far, all of the effects we've looked at have been used as insert effects. This means that the whole signal is sent through the effect and the signal flow goes like this. A clip is played on a track here. The signal goes through the first effect, through any subsequent effects, and then finally, if you're using the master track, the signal is routed through the master track, including any effects that have been placed on it. 
The point to remember from this is to consider the order you place effects in so that they work the way that you want them to. Very importantly, make sure that the limiter is the very last effect that the audio goes through before it leaves your computer. If you use an external DJ mixer, then it's still useful to use a limiter and you should put one on each track that you use. The alternative way to use effects is to use the send and returns. To use these, firstly make sure that the S and R icons have been pressed here and then drag an effect onto a return track. By turning up the send knob here, you can control how much of the signal you send to the return effect. The return track can now be routed like any other track, either to the master track or to an external output on your audio interface. The advantage of using send and returns is that a number of tracks can be processed by the same effect and each can be set to a different level. This means that it takes less overall processing power. There's one thing to remember when using send effects and this is that you should always set the effect to 100% wet. This is because the dry signal is still sent from the original track and so you just want to add to the original signal with a 100% affected signal. Hopefully this tutorial will have given you some ideas on which effects to start off using with your set. Remember though, this is just an introduction. There are many, many more effects available both within live and from third party developers. So have an experiment with these and you'll find lots of great ways to improve your sound. This is the end of the audio effects tutorial.